epilepsy service provision. The Business Committee has agreed to allow up to one hour 30 minutes for this debate. The proposer of the motion will have 10 minutes to propose, 10 minutes to wind. All other speakers will have five minutes. And I'll ask the clerk to read the motion. That this Assembly commends the work of the Assembly All-Party Group on Epilepsy and the Northern Ireland Advisory Council of Epilepsy Action and calls on the Minister of Health to establish a patient-led approach to epilepsy service provision, with particular emphasis on the protection and extension of epilepsy nurse specialists, and the creation of a database which will enable service provision to be directed towards the most used service areas, for the benefit of the 20,000 people in Northern Ireland who live with epilepsy and their families, and to ensure the best use of resources. I call George Robinson to move the motion. <clears throat> Principal Deputy Speaker, I declare an interest as Chair of the All-Party Group. I welcome the opportunity to bring this debate to the House and to highlight issues which need to be addressed to ensure a positive future for people living with epilepsy and ensure value for money targeted health services. <clears throat> I must be begin by paying tribute to all those in the medical profession who are grossly overworked but still care without complaint for people who have epilepsy. Neurologists, specialists, nurses, the Epilepsy Action and the Advisory Council for Northern Ireland all work diligently to improve lives, health services and public awareness of the condition in Northern Ireland. <clears throat> this motion calls for the creation of a database especially for people with epilepsy. This the cornerstone of future service development for people with epilepsy. Most debates are littered with impressive facts and figures about service provision, patient numbers and even mortality rates. However, these facts cannot be used today because they do not exist. No definitive information is gathered on a Northern Ireland wide basis about the numbers of people who live with epilepsy. Misdiagnosis or the incidence of sudden unexpected death and epilepsy in Northern Ireland. We need a database. We need facts to accurately deliver the services to people with epilepsy. <clears throat> Deputy Principal Speaker, in June, a uh, new minister told me by a written question that there <clears throat> are no plans to develop a database specific, specifically for epilepsy. There are other databases for renal, cancer, and MS patients. I, I will, <clears throat> sorry. I welcome these databases because they accurately inform your department how to plan for future services. Minister, in 2014, there were 35 people who died in Northern Ireland as a result of epilepsy. This is unacceptable, and with any other condition, there would be a public outcry. This debate is partly about preventing those deaths. It is up to you to spearhead, <coughs> spearhead the solution. I ask you to do that. A major step in that direction is making <coughs> sorry, a database the central core of service planning for the future. The all-party group report points out that exact figures were not provided by any trust on many issues. <coughs> I ask the minister to plan this database as a matter of urgency to address this situation. This single action will lead to service development that benefits patients and saves money. Okay. I thank the member for his contribution and I call Ian Millen. Aaron Sir Ian Millen. Thank you, uh, Principal Deputy Speaker. And uh, I too uh, I'm grateful for the member across the way for bringing this towards or to, before the Assembly today. I welcome the opportunity to speak on this very important issue and also acknowledge the work and commitment of the all-party working group, Epilepsy Action, and all those who treat and support people living with epilepsy. The role and value of those who provide uh, care both, to medical, both in medical and in the home cannot be under, overestimated. When we think about epilepsy, we think about seizures, but this, to some extent, simplifies the condition. It masks the fact that there are over 40 different types of epilepsy, 
and therefore at least 40 different types of seizure. It masks the difficulty in finding the right diagnosis and therefore the right treatment for individuals and the frightening and confusing experience that it is for those who are affected and those around them. Epilepsy is a very serious condition that affects people of all ages. Many are born with it and others will develop it in later life, usually as a result of a stroke or brain surgery or injury. Depending on the severity of the condition, it, it can impact on a person's, person's career choice, independence and ability to drive, to mention just a few. And sufferers have a right to expect the best possible care available to them. Self-care, a healthy lifestyle and timely reporting are important elements of managing epilepsy, but so too is having the right support at the right time. The motion calls for a patient-led approach to the service with a particular emphasis on the protection and extension of epilepsy nurse specialists. Epilepsy Action in their recent paper highlight the value of these nurses, both in terms of patient advice and support in managing their condition but also point to the potential cost savings as a result of fewer hospital admissions and follow-up appointments with GPs and, appointment, or, and consultants. Understanding your condition and treatment, face-to-face -face support and appointments at, a, at, interv at intervals appropriate to your, need, your care needs are all important elements of patient-centered approach. From this information uh, given, I can certainly see the advantages to this focused and well-informed service and commend the nurses currently for filling these roles. The motion also calls for the creation of a database or epilepsy register which would assist in targeting provision and cover all health trusts here in the north. And while I have no doubt that patient records are maintained and kept to a high standard, a database that records additional information or indeed records similar information in a different format allowing it to be compared and utilised for service planning, research and to support individual clinical care is certainly not uh, without merit. Today's motion has been very effective in highlighting these issues and also in raising awareness on the complexity of the condition and I thank the member across the way for proposing this motion today and I support the motion. Thank you. I call Joanne Dobson. Thank you, Madam Principal Deputy Speaker, and I also welcome the opportunity to contribute to this motion today as a member of the Health Committee and also a member of the All Party Group on Epilepsy. As has already been highlighted, epilepsy affects an estimated 20,000 people in Northern Ireland. Indeed, in my own family, my, my nephew Matthew lives with it every day. Um, a smaller number of, of those people receive monthly treatment. However, services continue to struggle to cope with the current numbers, so it is clear that there needs to be improvement. As was articulated by members during the previous motion back in May 2013, there are shortages in the number of medical staff needed to deal with this speciality. For so many affected by epilepsy, self-care is an integral part of daily life. This often involves family members, friends and work colleagues who know the condition, the triggers and how best to look after their, their loved one during an epileptic episode. This can lead to constant worry and concern and really makes the need for increased research and family support for people once diagnosed. The effect on self-esteem must never be overlooked, especially for young children. We know that epileptic episodes can often be triggered by work, especially long hours, or when people are under stress. However, that is for those who are able to continue their career. However, looking into the issue ahead of this motion, I have to say that I am disappointed that despite the question being asked in this House, that there are no plans to develop a database specifically for epilepsy patients. It's also concerning that historically the department doesn't collect specific data for expenditure on epilepsy services as this can't be broken down within neurology. And to that, the fact that the department could not provide information on the number of patients who have presented at emergency care departments, I think makes very firm case for change. 
Madam Principal, Deputy Speaker, we cannot hope to manage what is not being effectively measured. That is why it is important, as the motion suggests, to bring forward a database which will enable service provision to be measured and therefore be targeted. I certainly agree with the motion in endorsing the important work of the all-party group on epilepsy and expert support of Epilepsy Action NI. Their report, produced in autumn 2014, into epilepsy service provision across the five local trusts, brings out a number of interesting findings. However, the most noticeable issue in that information on epilepsy varies from trust to trust, especially in terms of the frequency of epilepsy and neurology clinics. The re report also argued the need to expand the use of and invest in specialist nurses. This could alleviate some of the pressures experienced by consultant neurologists. However, the conclusion, which focuses on the modernization of neurology, is the most helpful. One trust suggested this would require ground structures, people, and information to allow management of chronic epilepsy in the community, with timely and relevant support from specialist staff in hospitals. It also focuses on the need for a clear pathway of referral from primary to secondary care and, crucially, a Northern Ireland-wide database to maintain records for people with epilepsy. But a database cannot stand alone. It should be the start of measuring what is currently not being managed as efficiently and effectively as it could be. In conclusion, we had a motion in this chamber in 2013 and an important report by the All-Party Group in 2014. Action must therefore follow. We have had the debate, the conclusions and the working groups, so I look forward to the Minister's contribution and I hope assurances that action will follow. I once again commend the proposers of the motion in raising this issue in the House and I truly hope that a patient-led approach will follow. I call Mark Durkin. I also rise in support of the motion. I'd also like to congratulate the, the proposer and indeed the APG on Epsi who have worked hard and worked together uh, to bring this motion here today. Uh, it's something that I very much expect everyone to be singing from the same hymn sheet on and, and, and for that reason I'm not going to speak too long today. I know my colleague Jerry Mullen, who's a member of the APG will speak later on in the debate and, and make some more substantive points, I would think. Just in, in, in terms of the condition itself and the impact that epilepsy has on individuals, a few members have referred to that, I think it's fairly evident that this condition can be extremely debilitating. However, I was surprised reading through the information pack at just how common epilepsy is and therefore how many people we see every day, that we talk to possibly every day, who are living with the condition uh, and doing their best to keep it in in invisible. However, it needs to be treated. They need to be treated and they need to have the security of knowledge that uh, they will be taken care of, their condition will be managed and they will be helped to manage uh, their condition. That is why I, I think the issue or the ask of a database isn't a particularly big one, and I don't think it, it's one that there should be much or indeed any resistance to. I think it could be a cost-effective means of establishing sort of who needs what care. It'll make it easier for people to get the care that they need, and importantly, it'll make it easier for people to give uh, the, the care that uh, people need as well. The, the, the issue around the shortage of specialist uh, staff is one that causes great concern, I'm sure, to all MLAs. Sadly, it's, it's not something or a problem that's exclusive to the condition of epilepsy. Certainly. Good member for giving way. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, would he agree with me that this is not just a case for, for, the, for the Department for Health? but it's also a case for, for um, our education authority as well. Because when we send our kids to school, um, it is the teachers who will identify the triggers, who will see the signs before seizure, have to deal with the seizure. 
um, and the after effects of the seizure. Uh, and if I would name drop today uh, Miss Leeming of, of Carrick uh, Primary School in Lurgan, who has just um, received her training for the treatment of my grandson who's got epilepsy. Member will have an extra minute. Oh, thank you. I can assure the House I won't need uh, the, the extra minute, but I certainly concur with what Mr. Uh, Beatty says, and I'm sure the Minister will too. She has made it public uh, previously the importance of cross departmental collaboration on a whole range of issues, and this is certainly one given uh, the massively important and early role that educators play in uh, people's lives. Uh, I'll go back to the issue of, of the shortage of staff in terms of uh, a situation that we had materialise or develop in my own constituency a, a few years ago when we had a brand spanking new piece of ECG, I think it was, m machinery to carry out tests and, and, and give treatment to people suffering from epilepsy. However, there was no nurse there or no staff there to use it. So, uh, day and daily, children and families were having to drive past Alton and Galvin to come up to Belfast to get uh, work done uh, and, and treatment given that they could and should have been getting uh, closer to home that would have made life a lot easier for, for everyone. Uh, the, the report from Epilepsy NI I think is a very useful document that does highlight many issues. Uh, many, if not all of which, will be touched on, I'm sure, today by other members. Uh, again, I'll go back to the point. I think it's, it's very sad that a lot of these issues aren't exclusive to epilepsy, and, and you see very similar, particular with other neurological uh, conditions. I think to, to conclude, I will echo Ms Dobson's call for action. It's well and good that, that, that we have these debates and raise the issues, air our concerns. However, what people really want to see is action coming out of them. That's how we'll be judged at the end of the day. I call Paula Bradshaw. Thank you, Deputy um, Principal Speaker. And I rise to support this motion. Um, this is, of course, a very significant issue. No one could have any difficulty here today with the text of the motion, nor would anyone deny that it is important to put it on record for the 20,000 people and their families living here in Northern Ireland. Epilepsy is, of course, a condition which does not discriminate. It can strike any one of us at any time, and it is a condition that can have a devastating impact on the quality of life and well-being of the sufferer. Like others, I have no hesitation in supporting the work of the Northern Ireland Advisory Council of Epilepsy Action, and other epilepsy support groups and emphasising the huge importance of their work. The one thing I would say, however, is that over the summer months, like many people on the Health Committee, I did meet with um, different condition-specific lobby groups and charities. And I would say that this motion, with all due respect to epilepsy sufferers, this motion could be brought forward for any one of those conditions. Because there is no doubt that the answers are within the motion here in terms of the wider health reform. We, we do need expert-led multidisciplinary teams. We need more nurse specialists. We need better workforce planning and data management. We need better use of resources. So the motion is 100% correct in all that. But to do all that, we need reform of the entire health and social care service for epilepsy and for indeed all the other conditions. Such reform would probably deliver the type of shift left to ensure conditions such as epilepsy are properly diagnosed in the first instance, to ensure information is available to people concerned about them at the outset, and to plan support services and treatments more effectively, especially among primary care providers. So it would be interesting to know if this is the type of reform proposed in the expert panel report as chaired by Professor Bengoa, but of course, as we know in this chamber, we are being denied access to that report. So today, um, I'm grateful the Minister's here, and I would challenge her to um, publish the report as soon as possible. I think that it is important that we as health committee members with an elected mandate and many people within the expertise, um, within the sector with expertise, should have a few of that so that we can all contribute into it, so that we can have a consensus around its delivery. The health committee chair, who again is in the chamber as well, said at the outset of the assembly term that she wanted the committee to work together but this is impossible where we are denied access to these, this report. And I trust in the spirit of, of cooperation, she rightly proposed, that she will call on me 
call, join me today in calling for the immediate publication of the report. It is only once we seize the need to implement a proper reform programme for health and social care services with better data and workforce planning and more specialised and primary care cooperation that the outcomes proposed in this motion will become a reality. Thank you. I call Gary Middleton. Thank you, Principal Deputy Speaker. And can I uh, begin, like others, uh, by thanking my colleagues for bringing this uh, very important motion to the House today. Uh, I'd also like to recognise and congratulate the APG on epilepsy for their work uh, that they've carried out to date and the support and advo advocate uh, on behalf of the people with epilepsy. I also want to recognise the work uh, of FOIL Epilepsy Support Group um, for the work that they've done so far as well, particularly Keith Cradden uh, for his tireless efforts in raising awareness of the condition. Whilst a lot of work has been done, there's still much more to do to ensure that epilepsy has its rightful place within our health system and that it is seen as a chronic condition that needs greater attention, greater support and much less stigmatisation. Whilst many people that have epilepsy do not um, say th th that they do so, uh, whenever we discuss epilepsy uh, in conversations, we always hear people saying, well, you know, my friend has epilepsy, or I know someone uh, who has epilepsy. With the numbers being so large, it's inevitable that we all know somebody who has this condition. So this motion uh, calls for a number of actions to be taken to go in some way to addressing the many concerns around the provision for, uh, for, for people with epilepsy. Establishing a patient-led approach, I believe this is important when dealing with issues directly affecting the life of an individual. Whether it's having an impact on their health, their education or their employment, the patient should have an input into the services that they require. Obviously, this approach must be evidence-based as well. The epilepsy service provision itself, having spoken to people with epilepsy and colleagues on the APG, it's clear that they not only want to protect the services that's already there, but they want an extension of those services. They will not only, uh, this of course will not only help the patients with the condition, but it will have an impact on the wider health system through the reduction of their dependence on other specialists. And more importantly, uh, the impact it will have on the number of, numbers of people who actually die with the condition. So we need to ensure that we have the right level of support at every single level. There's no doubt, or there, should be, there shouldn't be any doubt, on the value of the epilepsy specialist nurses. They provide a crucial source of support and advice and enable many patients to manage their epilepsy effectively and remain independent in the community. In the APG report, it identified that there are trusts within, the, within Northern Ireland that do not have these specialist nurses and look to other trust areas for support. Without this cover locally, epilepsy patients have to travel to other areas, increasing the time for assessments and treatment. So more ESNs will not only result in a better service for patients, but, but could potentially bring about savings to the health service as well. Uh, in relation to the creation of a database, uh, as we all know, up-to-date, accurate information is something that our health service needs and relies on to ensure the best possible and most effective care is available and of course epilepsy should be no different. The database would provide the information and evidence for the targeting of services to areas of need and ultimately reduce the numbers of misdiagnoses and waiting times. And of course another use for the database would be, to, would be to provide a basis for gathering information on relationships between conditions because I think that's important in terms of links with uh, autism uh, for example where 46% uh, of children with autism also have seizures, so I think it's important that we share that information uh, across the board. I believe we must underst understand as well the interrelationship between epilepsy uh, and other conditions, but also between the life restrictions in terms of employment so and social services, or people having to give up their education due to lack of support. So I fully support this motion and the calls within it. Uh, we all recognise the pressures that our health system is under. However, the, the steps which have been proposed here will not only benefit the 20,000 people in Northern Ireland with epilepsy, but I believe it will have an impact on the health service uh, as well. Thank you, Principal Deputy Speaker. Aaron Sir Patchy, and I call Patchy. Gorham uh, Hagod, for you, Las Concorla. Uh, thank you, uh, Principal Deputy Speaker. Uh, I welcome the opportunity to speak on this motion today as a member of the Health Committee. And I also would like to thank uh, George Robinson for bringing this motion. Uh, in front of the Assembly. And at the outset, I'd like to commend the work of the all-party group on ep epilepsy and the work they do in shining a light 
on the needs of epilepsy patients uh, and the difficulties that they face. Epilepsy Action also plays an important role in this respect and their contribution to helping those who suffer from epilepsy uh, should also be commended. There is no doubt that a diagnosis of epilepsy can have a de devastating impact on an individual and on his or her family. Epilepsy, as we know, is most often diagnosed in childhood but can occur at any time and can have severe consequences in terms of ability to work, to drive a car and, and basically to lead uh, a normal life. Concerns have been raised about long waiting times for neurology appointments, which of course leads to delays in diagnosis and treatment. Waiting times are a concern, from, a concern for all of us in this assembly, uh, and I acknowledge that the Minister has spoken on a number of occasions now about her determination to reduce waiting times right across uh, the health service. So uh, I would hope that there will be improvement in that respect, uh, at least in the medium term future. As with any medical diagnosis, looking after oneself uh, is of vital importance and staying healthy is key. But along with that, patients should have access to the highest quality of care from their GPs through to their specialist nurses and neurologists. <clears throat> it is clear, however, that access to the highest quality of care is not always available. I acknowledge that the department has established a regional group to consider the modernization of neurological services, which includes epilepsy. Uh, as part of that work, the Public Health Agency has recently established a regional neurology nursing group uh, and that planning for epilepsy services will be included within this regional neurology group. However, uh, given the way discrepancy between epilepsy actions figures uh, of the number of epilepsy sufferers and the Trust's own estimates, estimates I would ask the Minister to look at again at, a possible, at the possible creation of an accurate database. Planning services uh, and resourcing those services require an accurate database. Uh, I support the motion. I call Robbie Butler. Thank you, Madam Deputy Speaker, and I can I apologise for not being here at the start of and the reading of the, the motion. Uh, I rise to commend this motion on epilepsy service provision. Uh, I don't think anyone could fail to be moved by the story which I listened to this morning on local radio about the young uh, man who suffers from epilepsy and his mother's heartfelt uh, uh, plea for greater levels of help and assistance uh, with regard to her son's plight as they live with the dangers of epilepsy every day. It was alarming to hear that their route to health will entail a cross-Atlantic journey and sadly not to be met here in Northern Ireland. As is stated in the wording of the motion, there are 20,000 uh, local people living with epilepsy. Epilepsy is defined as a tendency to have recurrent seizures caused by a sudden burst of excess electrical activity in the brain, causing a temporary disruption to the normal messages passing between brain cells. So this specified description is a condition which greatly impacts the people who suffer from it. A diagnosis can come as a worrying blow and, as we all know, can greatly impact areas of daily life as basic and fundamental as driving, as our member Sheehan uh, mentioned. Epilepsy has a worrying misdiagnosis rate, however, of 20-30%, to 30 and as a result, it's a very real possibility that there are people with the condition in Northern Ireland being left in a system where their needs are never identified, which are in turn only contributing to a far higher than normal rate of unscheduled care. We wouldn't for one moment, uh, Madam Deputy Speaker, tolerate such a rate of misdiagnosis for cancer, yet it's a, it's a sad reality for epilepsy. Of course we do not have that rate for misdiagnosis of conditions such as cancer, principally because suspected cases of cancer are referred to a specialist, and rightly so. Yet for epilepsy sufferers, people are most regularly seen by a, a general physician with no specialist knowledge of that condition. And that's not a criticism of those doctors but of a system that doesn't best signpost patients to the timeliest and effective path of support. In addition, there are some areas of Northern Ireland where the limited specialist services are next to non-existent. 
And as a result, health outcomes for people with epilepsy in not only Northern Ireland, but the UK more generally, are indeed very poor. In particular, I would like to raise the plight of children and young people with epilepsy. There's a wealth of research out there that reveals that they have a lower quality of life than their peers with other long-term conditions such as asthma and diabetes. Timely access to appropriate services is essential in the diagnosis and treatment of suspected epilepsy. In particular, MRI scans are particularly important, but yet, as my party previously has revealed, waiting times for a scan can sharp, are sharply increased in areas such as the Southern Trust, with some jumping from nine weeks to as many weeks as 16. The provision of specialist nurses across Northern Ireland is also poor. This is something that should be easily addressed with better NHS workforce planning, taking account of the need to train epilepsy nurse, uh, specialists with consultants and nurses. I would hope this debate will act as a timely prompt for the Minister and that the sporadic level of service provision is now no longer tolerable. I would call on her uh, to, along with extending nurse specialists, to carry out wider epilepsy needs assessment and assist in the development of the database that will ensure the appropriate support mechanisms are in place to ensure that people are receiving the appropriate and timely care. Thank you. Aram Sir Jerry Mullen. I call Jerry Mullen. Thank you, Principal Deputy Speaker. Principal Deputy Speaker, I rise to speak today as a relatively new member of the All Party Group on Epilepsy. However, what I am not new to is the impact that epilepsy has on many of the people in my constituency who suffer from that condition. And in this regard, I would like to thank Mr. Robinson for bringing this motion to the floor of the House today. One of the biggest barriers for sufferers of epilepsy, in my view, uh, Principal Deputy Speaker, is the stigma that's associated with it. Um, and I'm glad that this debate today allows us to address a lot of those uh, uh, sort of stigmas that are attached to it. It's a large-scale chronic condition which directly impacts on the lives, as people have already said, on 20,000 people uh, in the north while around 40 people also lose their lives to the condition every single year. Although we've witnessed many advances in terms of treatment and managing the condition, living with epilepsy has a wide-ranging impact on all stages of life, and that's something I want to address here today. Principal Deputy Speaker, children with epilepsy from across the North are being severely disadvantaged in school uh, which is leading to underachievement and impaired social development. And it's important that this Assembly recognises that early intervention is absolutely critical for children with epilepsy to ensure that they get the best possible support at, at the earliest uh, opportunity. It's also been estimated that some 46% of children who have autism, as already been referred to, also have seizures. When this chamber looks at issues like the, the statementing process and the colossal waiting list for child psychological assessments, we must also bear in mind the impact this is having on children suffering from epilepsy. All of these issues, Principal Deputy Speaker, are having a knock-on effect, and it's important that we have intergovernmental, cross-disciplinary approach to tackling these issues facing children with epilepsy. When it comes to epilepsy in adults too, uh, it can have severe consequences for an individual as it is a very difficult and unpredictable condition. There are people who have seizures every 10 to 15 minutes and this is having an impact in terms of health, in terms of employment and in terms of their own social well-being. And I know firsthand, as I have a neighbour with chronic uh, epilepsy who actually has to wear a helmet to protect her from falls during seizures. She's afraid to go out, she cannot socialise, and she needs round-the-clock care. This is the harsh reality that many sufferers of the condition live, live with on a daily basis. And I think we only have to imagine you know, what it must be like for someone like that who has to wear a helmet, especially a woman. Um, you know, her, it impacts completely on her 
dignity almost as a, as a human being. But it's important to remember uh, a significant number of people with epilepsy have avoidable seizures and that's what makes this debate so important and the work of the all party group. If the correct treatment is given at, any, at an early stage, many of the negative consequences associated with the condition can be avoided. For example, the loss of employment or having to give up studies due to a lack of support. Following diagnosis, it's important that there's a pathway to ensure that people with epilepsy are properly supported. Often this actually reduces the ongoing bills in the health service. We have National Institute of Clinical Excellence guidelines that lay out this clear pathway where there must be a wraparound service in place following GP referral and there must be access to specialised nursing. I know, Principal Deputy Speaker, that there are issues with misdiagnosis in GP practices and delays in referral to consultants. And again, that's another issue that has been already spoken about here today. But equality, but equally as important. I ask the member to bring his remarks to a close. Statistics show that across the north, there are only around 10 epilepsy specialist nurses with only 0.5 whole time equivalent in the Western Trust. Uh, the member's time is okay, up. I call you. the minister, Michelle O'Neill. Can, and can I um, also thank the member for proposing this motion, which provides us with the opportunity to consider the services that are provided to those living with epilepsy. And I want to thank all those that made considered and valuable contributions um, throughout the course of the debate. Can I, like others, also start by recognising the work of the all-party group on epilepsy? I think that they have shown a clear commitment to highlighting the needs of epilepsy patients. And I would like to put on record my appreciation of the valuable contribution with which Epilepsy Action makes in our bid to improve the lives of epilepsy sufferers. I also want to pay tribute to the hard work on epilepsy nurses, consultants and all the health and social care staff who play such a vital role in the delivery of epilepsy care in both hospitals and the local community. A diagnosis of epilepsy can have a tremendous impact on an individual and their family and many members have referred to that throughout the course of the debate. And apart from the physical impact on their health, epilepsy can also have significant re repercussions on an individual's ability to work, provide for a dependent family, and their ability to live a normal life. Epilepsy is not a single condition. There are over 40 different types of epilepsy, consisting of at least 29 syndromes, and a further 12 or so clinically distinct groups defined by the specific cause or underlying cause. Current estimates from the Health and Social Care, health and social care Board indicate that there are between seven and nine and a half thousand people living with epilepsy. It is of course fundamentally important that they receive the care and support they need to lead an active and normal life. The incidence of epilepsy here is estimated to be around one in 100, and this is broadly similar to estimated incident rates in Britain and in the South here in Ireland as well. Epilepsy can start at any age, but it's most, it most often begins during childhood. It's often not possible to identify a specific reason why someone develops the condition, although some cases, particularly those that occur later in life, are associated with damage to the brain. Epilepsy is most often diagnosed after patients have had more than one seizure. This is because many people have a one-off epileptic seizure during their lifetime. The most important information needed to make a diagnosis is a description of the seizures by the individual patient and someone who witnessed the event. It's also important to be aware that epilepsy is not something that can be cured overnight. It's a long-term condition that many patients will have to deal with throughout their whole lives. Medical treatment is therefore only part of dealing with epilepsy. As with other long-term conditions, it needs to be managed and the individual patient and their families play a pivotal role in this. The contribution of the individual patient in making the diagnosis and in managing their conditions supported by clinical staff cannot be ignored. The key to this is ensuring that appropriately trained staff working with patients and their representatives design and deliver care and treatment pathways which are patient-led and which are tailored for people's individual lives and their individual circumstances. The specialist epilepsy nurses in each of the five health and social care trusts already play a key role as a contact point for patients and as a valuable support to GPs and primary care teams in managing care for these often vulnerable patients. I want to see this specialist service enhanced and a regional group is, a, is currently working on the modernisation of neurological services which includes epilepsy. As part of this work, the Public Health Agency has established a regional uh, neurology nursing group. 
One of the group's functions is to review the staff and complement for all neurological nurse specialist posts, including epilepsy provision right across the north. The group will also consider future models of service delivery aligned to patient needs, succession plan for staff, and most importantly, ensuring that there is sufficient capacity within teams to meet the demand of services and ensure people can access the treatment and the information that they need. This motion also highlights concerns regarding the creation uh, of a database to aid in the care of epilepsy sufferers. While an epilepsy database does not currently exist, I am assured that the HSE trusts maintain medical records for all patients and their care is documented accurately within these records. Details captured include an account of the advice and support offered, investigations required and treatment options. However, there is no doubt that improvements in medicine are at least partly driven by a better understanding and better analysis of the evidence and information that is available. Condition-specific uh, condition databases can help inform how services and treatment are structured and delivered and can provide a more detailed picture of what is working and what needs to be improved. Technology and data can be uh, great enablers of quality improvement and it's important that we exploit them to drive innovation and a better service to patients. I have therefore asked my officials to look again at what information we do hold and whether there may be merit in creating a, dis a distinct database for epilepsy. I am committed as Minister to ensuring that the Health and Social Care provides the best possible services for epilepsy patients that we can, can within the resources available to my department. I look forward to working in partnership with the All Party Group and Epilepsy Action. I would urge them to continue with their important work in representing the needs of patients and their families, and I will continue uh, to work in partnership with them in the time ahead. Thank you, and I call Paula Bradley. Thank you, Madam Principal, Deputy Speaker, and can I start also by thanking my party colleague George Robinson um, for tabling this motion and for asking me to countersign the motion. Um, I also want to thank the All Party Group and pay tribute to them. I sat in the All Party Group in the last mandate and I saw firsthand just how conscientious they were and how focused they were in trying to make a difference um, for people uh, who suffer from epilepsy. There's also a third group that I want to thank, and that would be our research and library service for what um, I would imagine was a very challenging task for them in trying to find information around epilepsy services and statistics in Northern Ireland, because as we know that those uh, specifics are few and far between because it's been so difficult to uh, collate that information due to the lack of the type of a database and, and the notes that are being kept on that. I know it's been said before here in the Chamber, and I think actually we, we haven't had too much overlap on what has been said here, given that we had such a small amount of information to work on today, so I can I definitely commend members for that. But we know that the amount of people who live in Northern Ireland with epilepsy, epilepsy is in and around 20,000 people. And I think it was Ian Milne that also mentioned, and also the Minister and others, about their 40 types of epilepsy and also 40 types of seizure. So it comes as no great uh, shocked to us, and Robbie brought it up. Robbie Butler brought it up earlier about misdiagnosis, uh, and we know that that is happening on a regular basis. And people are unnecessarily given medication, which is causing severe effects on them and others that are not being diagnosed, and they also um, are having to live with the severity of that. Um, Madam Principal, Deputy Speaker, I think that this is also timely um, that we're discussing this today when we're all looking towards the future of health and social care and even the reconfiguration of services. In the last mandate, through various consultations, there was overwhelming advice that the management and maintenance of long-term conditions, of which epilepsy is, is, is one, should be managed within our community and within the home. So I believe what this motion is asking for will go in a, a, an immense way in, in achieving that. Uh, indeed, uh, on another point, we had a briefing in Health Committee last week from the Ambulance Service, and in their briefing they were telling us about their various ACPs or appropriate care pathways, and that is when uh, an ambulance is deployed to someone's home or wherever that might be, and uh, a lot of the time they are able to go in and treat leave the patient and refer then that patient on to an appropriate pathway that suits their needs. But unfortunately, um, it is my understanding that no such specialised team 
uh, our nurses um, are, are covering all of the trusts in Northern Ireland. We know there are some, but there certainly aren't across, across all of the trusts. So uh, if we see more uh, of the type of specialised nurses, we would then see our ambulance service be able to then refer all of those people who did not need hospital admission, which is what we were looking towards and what we want to achieve, that we reduce the amount of people that turn up at our emergency departments. And I see that um, the, the, the nurse specialist having a pivotal role in that when it comes to uh, the, these care pathways within our, uh, our um, ambulance service. Um, I, I know that Joanne had also talked about the lack of data um, and the, pr the provision of, of accurate information. And that is, again, as I said, it is through uh, uh, the lack of recording. I know as someone who worked for the health service for a number of years um, about recording. And sometimes it is very difficult to get that accuracy um, when you're coming to, especially when it comes to uh, admissions to hospital and uh, treatments in hospital, because a lot of people can come in with various different um, dis or very still different ailments and sometimes that is then registered as a certain ailment and not what they actually the underlying cause is. So that also happens as well. Uh, Mr Robinson in his opening statement highlighted a, a need for a more positive future for people living with epilepsy and ensure uh, value for money in the health service and I think that's something that all of us want to see and want to achieve. Uh, Madam Principal Deputy Speaker, if I could turn my attention um, to some of the comments during the, the debate. And uh, I, I know, um, again, Mr. Robinson had brought up in an answer from the Minister about there had been no plans. I am delighted to hear that the Minister um, is, is uh, stating now that she's going to ask her department to look at this again. Um, and I, I think we all welcome that. Uh, here today. I, I noticed even when we read through our packs and we saw a lot of the questions over recent years that had gone into uh, other health ministers, a lot, of the a lot of the answers coming back were very scant because the information was not available yet again. So it's good to hear that from the minister. Mr. Ian Milne um, again highlighted the fact that it's not just those who are born with epilepsy. We have a very high instance of people who develop epilepsy, um, whether that be through stroke or brain injury, and we need to remember that as well in those people, that it's not just children. There are many adults out there who have lived a relatively, what we would like to describe as a normal daily living routine, and their lives are affected by that. Uh, Mr. Milne also highlighted how this could help with the reduction of hospital admissions and uh, he had said that the database was not without merit. Um, I've already referred to some of the things that Mrs Dobson has said, but she's absolutely right when she said that services are continuing to struggle. And we know that is across the board, but I know that this is what we're discussing today. And she talked about self-care and how those people around su a sufferer of epilepsy are the ones that know best, and that they're the ones that are the most stressed, and that the ones that are constantly having to look out for those signs and symptoms. So those people as carers need our support as well, and that's something we'd hope to look at. Uh, Mr. Durkin um, has said that he, after reading the pack, and he's absolutely right, just how common um, that this is, and he talked about our last debate that we'd had in the chamber back in 2013, if I remember rightly, uh, when uh, again Mr. Robinson and myself brought that last debate, and it was looking, if I can remember again, at children and young people and reducing the stigma of epilepsy and other members have mentioned that in the chamber here um, that we need to reduce the stigma. Uh, Ms Bradshaw in some of her comments um, uh, talked about long-term conditions and she's absolutely right. This is yet another one of those long-term conditions, Madam Principal Deputy Speaker, that goes unnoticed. There are so many and we know about the big long-term conditions like heart disease, uh, like diabetes, these are ones that are talked about often, but some of these other lesser known ones are less talked about. I will take issue with something that she did say about uh, the health committee not working together. I don't think that is the case. I think that's rather naive. I think we work very well together, and I don't think we need the Bangor report in order to work well together, albeit I would love to have it in front of us. Though I, 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 
I, I suspect members think that this Bangor report is going to be some panacea. I don't know that it is. We will know when we get it, but it will certainly not stop me working hard, hard towards a better service. Um, I'm slowly running out of time, and I can't read my writing either, Mr. Madam Principal, Deputy Speaker. But I'll move on to uh, Mr. Middleton, and, and he had talked about lack, life res restrictions, lack of support and education in the workplace, and the wider impact uh, on the, the wider health service, and how if we had the right level of support targeted in the right areas, again, this would bring about major savings. I'll move on to Mr. Shane. And he had talked about again the re reduction in waiting lists and how that the, uh, this what we're asking for could go some way um, to looking at that. And he had also asked that the minister bring forward an accurate da database. I'll move on to Mr. Butler, and he talked again about misdiagnosis, as what we said earlier, and the high rate of that, and that uh, the system doesn't best signpost people as to where they should go. And swiftly, I'll move on to Mr. Mullen, and I thank him for his input, and I, I thank him for. Uh, being part of that all-party group and going forward with that and sharing with us, of course, the story of someone that you know and how that affects her daily life. Uh, and again, just in, in closing, I want to thank the Minister. I think it has been a very positive debate. I think um, when it comes to health, generally within this chamber, we all want the very best and we want, we want what's best for the people that we represent. So I thank her for her comments and her commitment um, to try and make a difference at this. Just finally, in closing, I want to go back to something that Mr. Robinson had said. He had reminded us earlier of the 35 people who died in, to, in Northern Ireland in 2014 due to epilepsy. I, uh, I have a neighbour who just last year lost her son to a seizure. I know full well how that affected their lives greatly. And if we can go some way to helping those people that are suffering from this dreadful condition, I, I, I welcome uh, the debate today. Thank you. Thank you. The question is that the motion standing on the order of paper be agreed. All those in favour say aye. aye. Contrary, no. The ayes have it. The ayes have it.